Hello, I'm Richard Jack Smith of Real Talk Movie Reviews. In a long and distinguished career, composer Ennio Morricone received six Academy Award nominations. He received an honorary statuette for a lifetime contribution to cinema and he won a competitive Oscar for The Hateful Eight. But of the six films he was nominated for, The Untouchables has always been my favourite, with Days of Heaven and The Mission running close second and third. Morricone gives us some great themes. He gets off to a cracking start with the main titles, which establish a very edgy and intense atmosphere. But his work in the Al Capone track is an absolute highlight. And considering the more recent Capone soundtrack by LP, that's E-L hyphen P, and how god-awful that was, it's clear that that composer didn't listen to The Untouchables. And regarding the other themes, the warm woodwinds for Elliot Ness and his family are absolutely gorgeous. The sad saxophone for the death theme is suitably melancholic and indeed is very suitable for what transpires in the movie. Far more so than in this day and age when we have superheroes or even people that we really come to dig in a film and how musically they're not properly represented. Those such as Ellen Ripley, Anne Lewis, James Bond and Jack Captain James T. Kirk among many others, Han Solo. So anyway, The Untouchables is a treat and he received a BAFTA for this effort and it's incredible just how he able to create these thematic threads which tie the whole thing together beautifully. Now I want to talk a little bit about one cue in particular, Waiting at the Border. I love the build up in that particular moment in the film and on the soundtrack. It could run a close, become a close cousin to the ghastly main titles of The Hateful Eight, which was Morricone's Oscar winning effort. And the reason why I say that is because he establishes this very suspenseful line and it does build up into this very uh, almost overbearing uh, feeling. But unlike The Hateful Eight, which was rather in your face about it, I liked how Waiting at the Border was much more subdued in the early going. You know that something exciting is about to happen but it's held in suspense very effective and then we come to the track victorious which has always been a personal favorite of mine in fact i remember sitting a exam at school and feeling that it went so well that i remembered that particular cue from the untouchables and it perfectly fit the the triumphant uh, mindset i was in at that time and when i wrote a tribute article about Ennio Morricone. I made sure to mention that particular piece as well. Overall, The Untouchables is a near perfect film score. It's occasionally knocked down a notch by things like Machine Gun Lullaby, where the suspenseful lines are maybe extended a little bit longer than they need to be. But overall, the, the thematic material is really what sells a soundtrack. And I would say overall, it's pretty close to being the ideal Elio Morricone soundtrack. Along with the Dollars Trilogy, Once Upon a Time in the West, Nostromo and Rampage, it's quite a terrific effort. I'm not going to give it my highest rating of five stars. I'm going to give it four out of five stars because I think... The th I don't always, with scores I love, give them my highest rating. I've been thinking a little bit about this lately. Things like Danny Elfman's Batman. When I compare that to something like Superman by John Williams, it, you know, one is, is up here and the other one is down here. So even though this is not Morricone's best work, the Dollars Trilogy pretty much takes care of that, it's still a stellar achievement. And La La Land Records, who have expanded this score and brought it out on a two-disc set, have done us a service.
I highly recommend it. For more film and soundtrack reviews, please visit Betty Jo Tucker's website, Real Talk Movie Reviews. On Facebook, you can find my pages, Hypnotic Movie Reviews and Hypnotic Soundtrack Reviews. I am Richard Jack Smith. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.